Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Jacopo Maiolini from University of Roma 3 and today I will present you a work on the identification and characterization of suckers in precision agricultural settings for large-scale hazelnut orchards. This work has been made together with uh, Ciro Potena, Renzo Fabrizio Carpio, Giovanni Olivi and Andrea Gaspari from University of Roma 3, Nico Pietroni from UTS and Emanuele Garone from ULB. The main idea behind the Pantheon project is the development of a supervisory control and data acquisition system for the precision, in this particular case, for the precision farming of hazelnut orchards. The SCADA system uh, consists of uh, unmanned uh, aerial and ground robots that collect data and perform farming operations. All the information uh, that is collected is sent to a central unit that performs automatic feedback actions, uh, for example, con control of irrigation, and supports the decision of agronomists. The consortium of Pantheon project is made by four universities, uh, namely the University of Roma 3, the University of Tusha, the University Lib of Bruxelles, the University of Trier, together with a large enterprise as the Ferrero Trading Lux and a small medium enterprise called Sigma Consulting located in Rome. The ambition of the Pantheon project is to introduce a new paradigm for the management of large-scale hazelnut orchards and to achieve the resolution of a single plant in terms of uh, information that is collected from the uh, robotic platforms and to perform some farming operation uh, to every, uh, with the resolution of a single plant. In the hazelnut farming settings, the orchards are well structured uh, with a regular planting pattern that enables the mechanization of some operations. However, there are uh, still some operations as uh, suckers control uh, that we will focus in this presentation that are difficult to automate and they are still uh, labor intense, uh, consuming a lot of time and resources. Uh, suckers are uh, shoots that grow from buds on the base of a tree and compete with them uh, for uh, nutrients. That's why uh, it is important to uh, get rid of these suckers and this is made by uh, spraying herbicide. Uh, up to now uh, the sucker control consists into uh, spraying uh, a non-calibrated amount of herbicide. Uh, this uh, happens uh, for both uh, small orchards where the spraying is, to carry, uh, is carried out by field workers uh, and is, is done manually and also on large orchards, where the spraying is uh, instead made by tractors with a pump. This uh, uh, non-calibrated uh, way of treating uh, suckers and spraying uh, herbicides also on plants that uh, do not have the suckers on their base uh, can bring some uh, consequences to the uh, plants, uh, starting from uh, damage, pure damage. Uh, also, uh, a possible long-term uh, is it is possible to have a long-term plant ecophysiological disturbance. Uh, of course, since uh, uh, the um, herbicide that is sprayed is uh, um, non-conservative let's say, there is an exceeding pollution uh, due to this. The proposed solution uh, aims to calibrate the herbicide to spray 
based on some features of the suckers themselves. The main suckers features are uh, their volume, which is uh, uh, where our focus will be in this presentation, and uh, their complexive leaf surface, together with their spectral response. The uh, calibration rule that we want to achieve is uh, made by two terms, the sum of two terms. One is uh, that it is proportional to the parameter uh, parameter selected uh, for the, for, to represent the sucker and also a constant amount of herbicide. There are some challenges uh, when one wants to reconstruct the suckers. Uh, since their shape uh, is extremely irregular, and also state-of-the-art algorithms may fail and fail actually in reconstructing uh, open-air vegetations as it is possible to see from the pipeline that is shown in this, uh, in this slide where the extracted point cloud or representing the sucker is uh, reconstructed by running a Poisson surface reconstruction and also because we decided to have uh, uh, a navigation oriented ses sensorial equipment as uh, we will uh, explain more in detail later on. The proposed pipeline is thus made by three steps. First, we detect the sucker's position thank to, thanks to a trained uh, neural network. Then the reconstruction of the sucker is carried out by a tailored meshing strategy. Uh, where uh, the previous listed uh, challenges arose and then the, um, we estimated uh, it, the volume of the sucker with a closed form formula. The hardware equipment uh, uh, is made, uh, that we selected is made by a 3D LiDAR, a Velodyne Volt P16, uh, which gives 16 layers of 2D, 2D scan uh, that are spanned on a uh, 30 uh, degree field of view plus or and minus uh, 15 degrees from the horizon and uh, an RGB camera a uh, genius wide cam f100 the webcam that are both mounted uh, as it is possible to see from the image of the uh, robotic platform which is a uh, uh, sherpa hl uh, RA. As previously said, the choice of a LiDAR, uh, this kind of LiDAR, comes from the fact that uh, it is normally present for, for navigation purposes, even though uh, this is an unfit for high resolution 3D reconstruction, as opposite, uh, uh, for example, um, to the Faro S70 laser scanner. It is uh, um, a really dense LiDAR, but really, really also expensive. The um, detection of the suckers has been carried out by training uh, the You Only Look Once library, the YOLO library. <coughs> and is able to locate multiple suckers uh, on the on the field while the robot is navigating through it, as it can be seen from the video, and the output of this neural network is uh, a per frame region of interest uh, for each uh, uh, discovered uh, sucker. The training uh, to uh, that we have done uh, is uh, divided and has been made with different. Uh, weather and light conditions, uh, so different days to have uh, an outcome which is more robust to uh, changes in uh, uh, daylight uh, and so on. The input point cloud that is uh, required for the second reconstruction, so the second step of the pipeline, is obtained by taking into account uh, only those points belonging to the ROI, to the region of interest given by the um, neural network of the previous step, and was exceeding green index is above to a certain threshold. This enables to filter out 
the uh, parts, the points that belong to the ground or uh, to the trunks of the tree that can be present inside the region of interest as you can see from the image uh, in this slide. The second step of the pipeline, so the reconstruction, is made by four uh, points. The um, first step uh, consists in computing the average radius alpha between each point and its closest neighbor. The second step uh, is to cluster those points uh, who are at a distance uh, which is below this, uh, this threshold alpha. Then uh, those cluster uh, that represent branches of, us, of the sucker are connected using a grid strategy uh, since uh, um, cluster should represent a leaf. A leaf. And the last step instead is to compute the final mesh as a Boolean union of spheres centered at the cluster points. The volume is then estimated by considering the sum of signed volumes uh, of the tetrahedra which is bounded by the origin and the three vertices of a triangle. This is possible since the final mesh, uh, the last, uh, the, the final mesh is composed by triangle faces. For the preliminary validation of the proposed approach, we measured the ground truth volume of three suckers through the uh, Archim Archimede method. And uh, as you can see from the table, uh, in all the experiments, the root mean square error remains uh, below 21%. The, um, the whole process, uh, so the whole pipeline, takes on average uh, 10 seconds when runs on an um, Intel Core i7 Mac. And the uh, most expensive step in terms of computational time is the Boolean union, so the last step of the reconstruction, the second reconstruction, that can take up to 2 minutes. At the moment, we are working on uh, using other uh, uh, suckers feature, features other than the volume to improve the whole pipeline. In particular, for the first step, so for the suckers, sucker detection, we are thinking of using uh, different spectral indices other than the green index, which is the one that we are using right now. And as you can see uh, from the images, and in particular the last image, of the, of the slide, the red edge could be uh, a good index to take into account to um, shape better the soccer region of interest and in particular the leads of the soccer. And this could be helpful to when we fed, we feed the neural network for soccer detection. Another soccer feature that we are in, uh, investigating regards the total surface of a sucker. This index can improve the calibration uh, and requires um, an RGBD camera uh, to reconstruct the mesh. The sucker detection is uh, still left to the YOLO library as before. Um, the um, last step after the mesh is reconstructed thanks to the cam this kind of camera, uh, there is need of a um, surface uh, uh, extraction of the of the sucker, so we need to do some filtering on the, on the mesh. Thank you for the attention, and I will be more than happy to take any of your questions.